we're looking at today, what are we looking at today? Um, we're measuring triangles, evidently. Uh, mathematicians have a special name for that, which I'll tell you in a minute. But I just want to notice what on earth is going on, because when mathematicians see something like this, we like to call this in the business a smoking gun, because um, you can see, clearly, with the exception of maybe one or two numbers, there seems to be a pattern, right? Now, it's not like, it's, it's not all the numbers are identical. I'm really glad you can see some people drew some huge triangles and some really small ones. Over here on the right-hand column for each of the triangles, you'll notice that pretty much all of these numbers, pretty much all of them, they all cluster around this ratio. Did you notice that? Right? And it, maybe it didn't take you very long to have a look at the people next to you. Uh, and in the same way over here, all of the numbers, they cluster around this ratio. Nothing up my sleeves. I didn't just write that. I was already prepared. Okay. Now, this is a mystery. This is a mystery. Okay. In fact, it's one of two mysteries we're going to explore today. Mystery number one is, how did I know? How did I know that this was going to be, like, I said to you, I made a big point, draw whatever triangle you like, and you all have drawn completely different triangles. I had no way of predicting what lengths you were going to have, but I knew there was going to be this ratio 1 to 2, and I knew there was going to be the 1 to 3, okay? So the question, number one, how did I know? How did I know? Secondly, more fundamentally, like, why would the triangles do this? Mathematicians talk about shapes and functions and numbers and all that kind of thing. And we speak about them behaving in certain ways and having certain characteristics as if they were people with personalities, right? But they, they're just shapes, right? Or maybe not, okay? So, what I want us to explore is, underneath where you've written all this, okay, make a little subheading. The subheading is ratios in triangles. Ratios Okay. Now, what we were comparing is all these different lengths, and then we measured all these out. But just to rewind, where did all this start? I didn't give you any lengths. All I gave you was, what kinds of measurements did I give you from the beginning? I gave you angles, right? So I gave you here the 30 degrees, and here the 19 degrees. Okay? So... What's happening here is ratios in triangles seem to have this inextricable link with the angles in the triangles. Okay? So um, the first thing you want to write is um, these seem to be defined by the angles. Now you'll notice I say angles plural, not angles singular, angle singular, because I said 30 degrees, which seems like it's just one, one angle. And I said 19 degrees, which seems like it's just one angle. But I kind of ninja in the fact that I actually know every single angle in your triangle just by saying this. How do I know? It's actually something I haven't written on the board, which I told you at the beginning, as well as the 30 degrees. What else did I tell you? I also said I wanted to be a right angle triangle, right? So not only do you have the 30 degrees, but you also have the 90 degrees. And because triangles only have three angles in them, they are called triangles after all, I know that the third angle has to be equal to only one value. There's only one thing it can be, assuming of course we can measure well. Um, have a look, if you've got a 30 and a 90, what does the last angle have to be? 60. It has to be 60 because? Good, the angle sum of a triangle is um, 180 degrees. And you can replay the same thing over here for this triangle. Again, um, I told you to make it right angled, which makes the final angle... Final angle? Mm, 71. 71. Now, just a little pause um, here. On top of your tables, you may want to write this um, word as well. It's very helpful. See this 30 and this 60, right? The 19 degrees and the 71. We call these guys compliments. Compliments? Not as in like, hey, nice hair kind of keel. I mean, um, compliments with an E, as in this wine goes with this dish really, really well. Okay? So 30 and 60, compliments. 19 and 71, also compliments. Okay. So what we've noticed is, these seem to be defined by the angles. You know what the angles are. The angles will tell you what's going on with these ratios, okay? But the question is why? Why would, like, angles is something to do with rotation, like how far have you turned around? 
Whereas this is all about lengths. Okay, so why are they connected? And this is why I gave you glue tape. Now, see how long this takes me to do. Here, and you'll need to draw something like this in your, in your book. Here is the explanation as to why knowing something about the angles has to tell you something about, ooh, there it is, has to tell you something about the sides as well. Because um, what, um, what topic are we in right now? Again, what's it called? MM3 and the name is similarity. Because when you have a look at all of the triangles that you have made, and you all made different ones, well, almost all of you, okay, you can see pretty clearly what's going on, right? What, what are all these shapes and how they're related to each other? They are basically the same shape. All that's different is the is the size, right? Now think back. <laughs> yes, the colors are different too. Um, think back to the. Oh no, I did the a bigger one first. Uh oh, I'm gonna put this one over here. Um, think back to the beginning of this topic when I said, "Hey, similar figures." I gave you a definition for these shapes, right? Okay, I'm just gonna stop because I'm running out of these things are just getting all squishy on top of each other. Similar figures, right? They have two things in common and one thing different. What are the things that all similar figures have in common with each other? What do they have in common? Yeah. Okay, so before I talked about angles, right? I talked about like their proportions to each other, their proportions, proportions. And then I also talked about their features, right? Their features like as in, it's got the same number of sides, they're all right angle, that kind of thing, okay? So if you can see, maybe in case you're on a side of the room or something like that and you can't quite see it. By giving you, by defining the angles, okay, what you had no choice in doing is in fact, once you know two angles, that's all I gave you, right? The 30 and the 90, or the um, 19 and the 90. By telling you two angles, that forces the third one to be the same. If all the angles are the same, then everything else also ends up being the same. It's just size that ends up being different. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. So, uh, here's our explanation. These seem to be defined by the angles, and the reason why, oh, the reason why, this is because, having equal angles, forces the triangles to be similar. They have to be. You can pick, in fact, any three angles you like that add up to 180 degrees, which will form a triangle. They don't have to be 30, 90, 60, or 19, 90, 71. Any three angles you like, and if you start doing this exercise again, and um, cutting out some more, they're all going to end up being similar to each other. They can't do anything else. They have to be. Okay. 